I'd like to have a short look now at hatching and this is the tenth section of this tutorial so we'll uh, get in a bit closer on our little office area and I'm going to turn off the the layer for the electrics and for the areas now areas one's easy to turn off that one's going to let me with the electrics it's the current layer so it's a bit tricky to turn that one off I think we should create a new layer first for our hatch patterns so create a new layer let's call it hatch and I'm going to choose a, a grey colour for this just for to be a bit different let's go for colour 253 and we will make this current ok close the dialog ok we're ok now to uh, turn off or freeze the the electrics layer ok now these are, these three items at the moment are blocks uh, and so we can't really hatch inside of those they, they're kind of sealed it's not going to let us play around with those so what I'll do is explode these so X return and I'm just going to explode those three tables just so I can fill them with the hatch patterns and it's it's a bit easier to see okay hatch is a current layer so let's just dive in so H A T C H uh, it's a difficult it, this toolbar doesn't come up very easily um, you have to really invoke it using the hatch command okay looks fairly complicated but actually it's not too bad uh, the the first thing I want to show you is is this item here associative and what it means is that when the hatch patterns created it remembers the object in which it's been placed so it remembers the shape that it's housed in now the the most basic way of adding a hatch is to pick some points and hope you remember where you've been and where you haven't uh, it's very very tricky to do if any, anything more complicated than a square and it's and it doesn't work very well you see that when i when i move around the screen it it tries to interrogate the objects and sees if it can actually fill them with a hatch pattern so it's not managing this yellow object here because it's maybe got a gap somewhere it's managing the columns it's managing that concrete panel it's not happy with this one depends where I'm moving slight adjustment of position and it's and it seems to work still not happy well, it's flood filling all that area so there must be a small gap somewhere that the hatching is escaping into so just hovering around and you know the, the software is doing a fairly reasonable job of of identifying a shape okay it's not 100 percent reliable though and because of that it's easier to actually create your own shape so instead of hatching just now what we'll do is just create a, a polyline just a random shape just create a polyline and when I get to this point I'm going to type in the letter C to close the shape so I've got a shape that can be hatched it won't let the hatching leak out so hatch again okay this time I'll accept it okay what it's going to do is use a pattern and from the looks of this the patterns very tight okay you can see it there it's kind of crisscross pattern but very tight so maybe we should increase the scale in immediate immediately so that it doesn't stress it too much okay so there's a there's a pattern sitting in that shape okay if I press escape and now I adjust the boundary you see that the hatch pattern knows it was it's supposed to be inside this shape it even lets me add a vertex remember how we did this with the area polyline if I add a vertex it's happy to still play ball okay so creating a shape like this is is, is very useful especially if the hatch is associative okay I'm going to delete that just now okay and delete the hatch pattern so let's look in a bit more detail at the the settings for for the various hatches that we can use so hatch again 
Okay, let's go one by one. Let's do the solid one first. It's the kind of the, the one we use actually the most regularly, I would say. So solid fill. Let's select a boundary object. And to hatch this properly, we'd need to pick all eight items because there's four curves and four straight lines. So we'd pick all four, all eight. Then press return. Okay, do you notice that the green line is showing up bright? It auto when, you, when you hatch in this method, it automatically puts the hatch pattern at the back so that you still get some line definition around your shape. Okay, the hatch pattern doesn't, the solid hatch pattern doesn't have any settings. It's just fill. Okay, let's try a pattern instead. Okay, so we choose a pattern and then select the actual hatch pattern we want. Okay, so there's there's a fair few here. They're all a bit samey. Um, so let's go for ANSI 138. See what we get with that. Okay, I'm going to use this select boundary objects method again. Okay, it's looking a bit big. So 50 is the scale there. So I can adjust it with the sliders or type in a number if I wish. So I want to go for 10. We've got an angle adjuster here so we can tweak the angle or you can overrule it. Okay, setting the origin is a useful thing to do if you want the, the hatch pattern to start at a specific point. So let's put this to an angle of 45, which should make it vertical. Okay, and then if I set the origin, I could say that I want it to be perhaps the midpoint of this line. And you should see the hatch pattern adjust. So if you need to line up with something specific, you can set the origin. <clears throat> Our old friend annotative is here as well, and that would determine whether this hatch pattern is visible in viewports of certain scales. So once again, a bit tricky. Okay, happy with that. Let's try another type of hatch pattern. And this one is the user defined pattern. And this is basically lines, single line hatching, but you determine the spacing and the angle. So the one now isn't a scale that's a bit uh, difficult to get your head around. This is actually millimeters. So if I want the lines to be 25 millimeters apart, I'll select the objects. That's the gap there. These are 25 millimeters apart. If I put them at 50 millimeters, the pattern changes. There's a secondary pattern you can add to this. You can double up. So you could say, I want full cross hatching. So if you're wanting 150 millimeter tiles, that's it. So it's very useful for, for simple flooring and walling patterns. Okay, so let's, let's change this one. Instead of being user defined, let's change it. So it's dead easy to, to modify a hatch pattern. You just change, you just pick it, and Let's say we want to hatch this with a gradient instead. That's looking rather rather funky. Okay, we can choose the colors. Or we can choose... Mm -hmm. So we, as well as changing the colors, we can change the, the pattern as well. So you see here, when we click on hatch pattern, we'll actually get slightly different methods of applying the gradient. So some of them are quite elegant. Okay. And if we press escape, we're left with the pattern. We can choose any color we want. We don't have to be stuck with the ones just down from these lists. If you pick select colors, then you can choose different colors from the from the table. 
Okay, now if you have a, a fairly complicated setup, then you could copy hatch patterns from one area to another, and that's using the match properties. So it actually shows up here as well. So we can we can match the properties of one hatch pattern to another. So a simpler way, just use MA and pick your source pattern and your destination pattern. Just going to undo that and show you what happens with a solid hatch pattern. Now, what we can't see, picking the picking a pattern like this is very easy because there's so many lines basically. But the solid one is a wee bit trickier to pick. It's not so happy in letting you select it. Now, if you if you imagine that underneath here, there's a, it's actually triangulated to be able to do it as a solid, so that <clears throat> there's a number of lines that we can't see. Uh, sometimes you see them. Depends on how you how your screen's set up. Now, the the quite possibly would be a line across there, or they might be going diagonal. There could be all sorts of underlying shape here. You usually always find you can pick if you go for the very center of the hatch pattern. Okay, if you can envisage where the middle of that object is, it's about there. You'll usually hit the hatch pattern straight away. But you will also find other positions that will and won't, okay? Will there, won't there, okay? Because there's, there's probably not an underlying line to work with. But it's pretty clever and you know, it's reasonably easy to set up. Watch out for hatching things all in one go. I'll just, I'll just demonstrate that. And it just makes it more difficult to edit if you hatch too many objects in one go. So if I using which one have we got user defined yeah we'll go with that and if i select boundary objects and i take all three of these tables okay it just makes it a bit trickier to work with the hatch pattern Let's see what happens okay so you see if i move one of the tables the whole thing moves so it's it's better to to hatch in in smaller sections it'll uh, not give you so much of a problem okay that's a, a good place to stop just there.